So, hello there. And how are you today? So, um, I had carpal tunnel surgery on my right hand. So I am recuperating from that. And I, I take some time to make as many episodes as I can during this time off from work. And hoping that you enjoy, hoping that you're having a great day. And um, as usual, feel free to drop me a comment. Let me know what's going on. Just let me know what's on your mind. And so we left off where um, cousins were in Marie's kitchen that morning. And she put on some music for them just to like vibe and relax. And um, one of them yells out that I don't have no hangover. And I said, when they say they don't have a hangover, that means they have a hangover. So we're gonna pick up from there. So let's see. So Marie says, who said anything about a hangover? But since you said it, here's something for those that might have a slight hangover. I called back to him. I had to finish my sentence because they were laughing at us going back and forth. It was so evident boyfriend had tied one on last night and was paying for it this morning. I went on up the stairs to get myself together. I'd wear this jumpsuit my mother had picked up for me. An hour later, I was dressed and ready to go, so I called for a cab to pick me up and take me to the restaurant to meet Anthony. I walked down the driveway to the waiting car with a yard full of family almost accompanied me to the taxi. I got in and rode to Belmar, where on the dock they had great seafood, fresh off the boat. The boats literally stopped at the back door of the restaurant and unloaded today's catch. I had arrived about 15 minutes early. This way it would give me time to get myself together and watch him make his way to our table. As he appeared through the people that were near the door waiting for a table, he stood out. He was tall and fine. A low haircut that was silky and curly. He had on a crew cut neck shirt that fit very close. It was cream colored with navy blue slacks. I put my hand out as he approached me for a handshake. He took my hand but didn't shake it. He touched his pretty lips to my hand in a gentlemanly kiss. Then he seated himself across from me. We ordered drinks and talked about the show and hairstyles. As we ate our seafood platters, we talked and laughed so easily together. The conversation was just seeming to flow from one topic to another. He asked if I had ever thought about doing shows as a profession. I answered no, the opportunity had never presented itself. As we talked, he asked me to do hair for another show that was to take place in Philadelphia. I almost jumped across the table at getting this chance, but I played it cool. I told him, that sounds good, and would like the details about the show. He told me what he knew at the time, and would talk with me on a regular to keep me on top of things. As we near the end of our meal, I asked him if it would be possible for him to drop me off. He was like, no problem, I'd be glad to. He was looking at me a bit too much, yet not quite enough to make me self-conscious of his eyes watching. But I was very aware of his eyes on me. On our way out the restaurant to the car, he put his hand on my lower back, ushered me towards the door and towards his car. And yes, it felt good there. Kind of like it belonged there. Just a nice guy with a good opportunity for me, I thought to myself. And let's leave it at that. Anthony opened the car door so I could get in. And then he walked around to his side of the car. I gave him driving directions as he drove me home. When we arrived in front of my door, most of our visitors had left for home. I figured I'd be nice 
and I invited him in. He was like, sure, let me park. As we walked up the steps and the walkway to my parents' front porch, my mother and cousin, along with my Aunt Kate, were sitting out there. I told him to have a seat while I went to get a cool drink of lemonade for him. By the time I had come to the porch, my father and another cousin from Baltimore had joined them on the porch. This conversation flowed easily with my folks. We all laughed and talked about a little of everything. After about 20 minutes or so, Anthony decided it was time for him to leave, so I walked him down to his car. When we reached his car, he exchanged farewells and he kissed me on my cheek. Then I got in his car and pulled off. I went back to the porch. My mother was smiling and teasing. I saw him kissing on you. I said, Mama, that was just a simple, friendly kiss. He seemed like a nice guy. That's all there was to it. I excused myself and called Monica from the neighbor's yard to come in the house with me for a while. She was out there playing with my little sister and the uh, little girl next door, Mary. Monica, Mary, and Taz came inside. We ate some watermelon and watched television for a short while before the kids headed back outside. I told Monica to stay in the yard. I'd be calling her in to get ready for bed soon. I didn't have to worry because nine out of ten times, she was playing in our yard or right next door. The girls went back outside and I gradually fell asleep on the sofa trying to watch the mod squad. I had been asleep for about an hour, I guess, when I awoke to the telephone ringing. I got up and went to the kitchen to answer the phone. It was Marvin. I told him to hold on while I checked on Monica outside. I was glad to hear his voice. We were talking for about 15 minutes when he started telling me he wasn't going to be able to make it down this coming weekend. I offered to come up his way and bring Monica with me. He said it wasn't a good idea. He had quite a bit of running around to do. And um, look, to me, I felt like he just didn't want us to come up to his place to swim. He could, he could take care of his business, and whenever he got back to the house, we'd meet him there. That wasn't good enough, so I thought to myself, I'm not going to force myself on him. So I said, well, that's all right. I understand. I don't want to force myself on you. I'll see you the following weekend then. He was like, that's solid. Close to 45 minutes later, we hung up. I walked to the living room door to see what the girls were doing. They were coming onto the porch towards me. Mommy said, dinner's ready, Taz told me. Then she opened the door and asked what's wrong. She was very observant. I always been. I told her I had just talked with Marvin and he pissed me off a bit. She told me not to worry. It'll be okay. As she, as she leaned her sweaty little head on my breast and hugged me. I told them to come. Let's go eat. I figured I'd just make my plate so I could sit in front of the television and have a screwdriver with my dinner. When I say screwdriver, I don't mean a tool. <laughs> I had had one before I fell asleep and hadn't finished it. Before I could get in my folks' kitchen, our neighbors came around, came around over bringing a big pot of red rice and beans. One of my cousins was still there and was leaving tomorrow morning. So I talked while we enjoyed our meal. Early Sunday afternoon, most of our visitors headed back to their homes. Although I had enjoyed everybody, it was going to be good to hear peace and quiet again. Having a hard time turning the page. And this is the book I'm reading from, as usual. Uh, turn, Paige, turn. Hey, after we'd eaten and cleaned up, I returned home to lounge on my chair 
while Monica was upstairs watching television and reading before bedtime. Everything was quiet again, and everyone seemed to relax and rest, getting ready to face the upcoming work week. On Monday, I spoke with Anthony, and now here it was halfway through the week one evening. I had freshened my drink and was more than halfway finished nibbling on my dinner when the phone rang again. To my surprise, I heard a pleasant voice on the other end, full of Italian accent. Hello, darling, Anthony said. It's so nice to hear your voice. How was everything, I asked. Oh, believe me, things would be so much better if I had you here with me, helping out. I've been running like mad. I have an update of information about our tour, and I was wondering if you might want to meet me for a weekend, or if you prefer I come get you. Look, all I know is I need a break. Total relaxation for a few days, he said. I replied back to him. I can just imagine that much traveling and working nonstop. You probably do deserve a break. But you haven't answered my question. I want to spend the weekend with you. Do you want to meet me or should I pick you up? Is the question Anthony asked me. Well, I probably enjoy spending a weekend with you, but I'll have to take a rain check on it. You know, I am seeing someone, although it seems to have come to a standstill, I did answer. It's not like we haven't spent time together before. What's the deal? Talk to me. Don't let me make a fool of myself, Anthony said. Look, there's no way you're making a fool of yourself. I just need to see what is going on for sure with my dying relationship. I truly enjoyed talking with you, I told him. Hey, I guess I understand, but I do. But to be honest, I'm not happy with your answer. Then on the other hand, I respect what you're trying to do, even if it makes little sense to me. I wanted to explain the business to you and leisurely go over plans for the Philadelphia show, Anthony replied. Sweetie, I'm going to have to call you back tonight if it's all right with you, he asked. I'll be here with the phone in my hand, I said, laughing. Oh, what's the joke? Tell me. I dare you to tell me. He said, pretending to be serious, but I could hear the laughter in his voice. I told him to call me when he got a chance tonight. It was summer, and I wasn't working at the school during the day, just doing hair, so I could um, so I could sleep late if we were up on the phone late. Now, to be honest, I do go to bed almost when the sun um, goes down, except in the summer. Sometimes. I go to sleep before the sun went down. The girls got to get a beauty rest. I thought to myself, I'll call Marv tomorrow to see what was really going on with him. My aunt Kate came to the door a few minutes later with my mother and Monica. And they walked in the door. Monica got ready for bed while my mother, Aunt Kate, and I talked our girl talk. We always had so much fun together. We were doing our girl talk earlier during the day, so I didn't think she'd be calling. So, um, Monica answered the phone. While standing over near the stove, she was smiling when she called to me to the, to the phone. It was Marv. We spoke for about five minutes. Then I asked him if I could call him back in a little while. So we're going to get to this conversation with him. But we're going to stop there right now. And again, you guys drop me a line. Please, um, if you click like or subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. And also, feel free to please drop me a comment and let me know what's going on. Thank you for stopping in. Again, I hope you enjoyed. Love and peace to you.